welcome back to the Board Drill Podcast. As always, I'm your host, Kyle. Uh, tonight, Matt had a scheduling issue, so he won't be with us, but we're excited. We have Coach Co on tonight from Coffee County. He is a former state championship uh, winning coach at Madison County in Florida and current state champion in Coffee County. So, Coach, welcome to the show. Congratulations on a great year. Glad to have you on. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate you having me, man. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, obviously, you and I have interacted several times in the state of Florida. I've always been a big fan of yours. Uh, you do such a great job. And tonight we're going to talk about really building relationships in the hallways, but not only the hallways. This is something I really like that you brought up, but in the community, right. um, which is something you've clearly done a great job in in a couple different places. So I'm excited to hear your take. Coach, I'm going to go ahead and, and turn it over to you and you can go ahead and, and run with it. OK, I'm going to share my screen. Yeah. Coach, try to <laughs> um, let me see if I can. Here we go. You know, I always start, um, if I ever speak at a clinic or, or anything like that, and, and I always tell the young guys there, uh, don't, don't do like I did. Um, you know, the, I had to learn the hard way. Um, I, I grew up uh, on the sidelines. My uncle was defense coordinator at Arbondale High School there in Central Florida. And so I've known for a long time um, I was going to be a football coach because I wanted to be just like he was. You know, he got <laughs> – he wore short, uh, shorts to school every day, um, you know, but just seeing – he never seemed to have a bad day, right? He, he always seemed to have joy. Uh, win or lose, he was affecting kids the right way, and and I just remember that growing up, and, and uh, so I've known I wanted to be that. But I kind of – when I moved to Madison, I coached at Arbonne for nine years, uh, started in 94, and then uh, February of 03, I moved to Madison, and it was totally different. Um, you know, there was an opportunity there to win a state championship and, and I kind of lost my way. Uh, not that I didn't love the kids and, and, and care about the kids, but chasing that state title, uh, was everything. Yeah. So, uh, you, you know, coach, um, I share this at clinics and, um, anytime I'm, I'm on podcast or anything, this is uh pictures of the van, um, <clears throat> In, in 2008, when I was at Madison County, I've always known I want to be a coach. My, my uncle was defense coordinator at Arbondale High School in Central Florida when I was growing up. So I grew up in a locker room and on the sidelines. And I coached Arbondale for nine years. And then I came to Madison um, in uh, February of 2003. And we played for the state title in 03 and 04 and got beat. And then 05 and 06 went to the semifinals. 07, we finally kicked the door in and got one. And uh, we taken Jacoby McDaniel and Chris Thompson uh, out to San Antonio to the combine deal yeah. uh, for the All-American game. And then Travis Hodge, who played at Bowles in the Citadel, um, he was coaching with us. He was sitting behind me. I was sitting in the passenger, the front passenger seat. And then Coach Carroll's son, Bubba, was driving. He was coaching with us. Um, and we stopped in Houston to get something to eat, and we were on the way home. And uh, everybody was asleep except for me and Coach Carroll, who was driving. Wow. And um, we were talking about spring, actually. And uh, we had like 14, 15 starters coming back off that 07 state championship team. And I just remember um, him saying, oh, crap. It wasn't crap. But lady <laughs> driving, her tire blew out. She Jeez. kind of sideswiped us. And, man, we start flipping and rolling. And, and uh, you know, Coach, I, I'd kind of lost my way. Everything was about winning the state title. and and um, in that moment, a state title didn't mean anything. Yeah, I bet. Um, football didn't mean anything. And I realized, you know, you're not in control of anything, you know. And um, we were very, very fortunate. Uh, Coach Hodge, man, he got cut up. Like his back looked like a tiger had Jeez. literally just tore him up. And then he got cut up below the waist a little bit. And, um, Man, he was fortunate to make it, and uh, they kind of insinuated that he wouldn't have kids. And man, he's got two two boys, and, and that's said, good. <laughs> oh, girl, I mean, it was rough, coach. Yeah, and, but all I cared about at that moment was getting back to my wife, and at the time, um, my my two little boys, you know, and uh, a nurse happened to be driving behind us, and and she told us, she said, "Y'all, man, y'all flipped the roll like eight different times," and um we hit a tree sideways. You see that one picture. And yeah. 
that picture, that seat is where Chris Thompson was sitting, who played who played for Florida State and played for the Skins. Yeah, for a long time, probably the greatest human. Played being. for the Jags too. Go Jags! Jags. Yeah, <laughs> probably the greatest human being I've ever coached. And uh, his seat came unbolted. It, Gosh, we had, we had our luggage in there. It was nowhere to be found. Coach Hodge got ejected, and man, I finally got Holy out of the van, God. and I'm trying to find Chris. And this is crazy. He's literally. We were kind of we went down kind of in a little culvert there, yeah. and he Chris is literally walking towards me on I ten, on the side of the road, man. Wow! I just remember seeing his Letterman jacket, and uh, with hardly a scratch on him. Jacoby was kind of laying out the back. He was laying down the back. You can see his blood. You know, all I remember seeing blood and glass all in his dreads, and and uh, a guy had actually pulled over and helped me get Jacoby out. Wow! And, uh, scariest night of my life. Um, changed my life forever, changed the way, um, I approach coaching. I love, I've always loved kids and coached them hard and, and all that. But, you know, that night they took me and the two players to a different hospital and, and we laid in that hotel bed, you know, I couldn't go to sleep and they just kept looking at me and I kept looking at them and I'm thinking, you know, this is somebody's kids yeah. that's with us and, and, uh, Man, who cares? You want a state champ? I mean, we hadn't even got our rings yet, and I didn't care. Yeah, I just wanted to get back um, to see my wife and kids. So I always start off because there's a young coach somewhere um, that thinks winning is everything, and how many rings he can get is everything, and how many D1 guys he coaches, and and man, that's not it. It's it's affecting it's affecting young people, and and um, affecting the people around you and, and, and really not um, putting football ahead of everything else. Our FCA guy, when we got back in town, he said, uh, he said, I hope now you'll consider um, spending more time with those who are going to sit in the front row of your funeral than you do spend as much time at the field house and all that. And so that hit me right upside the head kind of like a, yeah, coach. I mean, that's an incredible story. A, I'm glad everyone came out of the unscathed right. and okay. You know, and B, you know, I, I've known you for a little bit. I, I'm not going to act like we're the best of friends or anything, but right. I have. That's the first time I've ever heard that story, and that's that's yeah, unbelievable. Coach, it was nuts, man. Um, but was, yeah, I mean, I can see where that would be life changing. I'm right there with you as as we get older as coaches and become fathers and right. husbands and things like that. It really puts things into perspective, and that is such a good message for young coaches. Right. I've been there. Matt has been there. Every guy I've been around where state championship and grinding and all that is the only thing that matters. And then your life changes, whether it's becoming a husband or a father or some crazy accident, which I'm glad everyone's okay. in. but that is such a good thing. I, you know, it hits different now when, when you're driving down the highway and there's horses on the side of the road. Yeah, coach. It's, you know, I, like all I can do is kind of chuckle and not in a disrespectful way, just from a, a, like, I just can't believe that. And I'm just so glad everyone was okay. Cause, um, you know, obviously Jacoby and Chris, I, I got to know when they were at Florida state too. Right. So, you know, those are two guys that have been an impact on my life as well. So I'm. And the only way, only thing we can gather is, is coach Hodge went out the side and, and like busted all the glass and Chris had to follow him, you know, yeah. because the man hit on the other side. I mean, it's just, I don't know. It's nuts. We're very fortunate. Um, yeah. Good Lord wasn't done with us yet but anyway i always start with that you know and and so i always said if if i ever got to become a head coach man i'm gonna make it about relationships and that's just my family i I put that on there for those young coaches you know i also i grew up without my dad you know but i was fortunate i had a great mom who didn't play the radio didn't let us make excuses (laughs) you know um but my uncle was there and my high school coaches were were my heroes you know and again i was around them since I was, you know, knee high, that's all I knew. Yeah. Um, my dad was on drugs. Um, the, the very few memories I have of him is just beating the mess out of my mom. And, you know, just, it's just, it's just, it's bad. It's terrible. Um, he died at like 55 years old. Um, they, they found him laying in a bathtub. He'd been there three or four days, you know, and, and I went to the funeral, um, out of respect for my, my granny, his mother. And, and it hit me there at that funeral too, man. Like there was a preacher there that never met my dad or knew him. And I felt bad for him. Cause I'm like, 
what do you say at a funeral for a guy you don't even know? You know, you got to get out and talk. And then our, my high school coach was there, who was also my dad's high school coach. And I love Joe Parrish is my high school coach. He's taught me so much, and, and I love him to this day dearly. But he spoke at my dad's funeral, and the only thing he could really talk about was how good of a football player he was playing for him as a high school football player. Right. Yeah. And it hit me at that funeral like, man, if that's all they can talk about at my funeral was how good a player I was or a coach, I have missed the mark entirely. So, you know, and I'll get emotional with this. I'm I'm looking at uh, these two pictures that you got pulled up of my boys. I got them right here in my window in my office. Yeah. Um, I would trade that everything I went through as a kid and not having my dad to have those two memories with my son. That's the bottom one is, is Zach. We won three in a row at Madison. That's his last game playing football. Um, You know, just I wouldn't trade that memory for anything. Now he coaches with us. He's our ninth grade O-line coach. The one one above it is my youngest son, who's a junior here at Coffee, And uh, that's just a few months months ago at the Benz. Little rascal called a touchdown pass on like fourth and and eight. I have no idea how he called it. (laughs) Uh, You know, it's, it's at the bottom of his fingertips. But to have those two memories um, almost four years apart, you know, winning state titles in two different states. And then, you know, the top left is my wife and my two little girls. And then Zach's uh, fiance, Lydia, who is my best friend's daughter. It's, it's crazy wow. how that um, worked out, you know. And then the bottom left is just my wife and our two little girls. And, and uh, it's just been magical. It's been magical. The good Lord yeah. bless me far more than I deserve. But um, I always show that at clinics to try to, you know, there's there's one young coach, and it might be an older coach, that, man, that's what's important. You know, you can pour – we pour everything we've got into our kids here that we're entrusted with. Um, but you got to do the same with your own kids. Don't don't sacrifice them. Yeah. You know, make sure they're a part of it. So I always start off anytime I speak or anything um, with those pictures, you know, just to show young coaches. You know, maybe one of them will listen and, and all that. And then the next one um, is kind of our philosophy. <laughs> we we had it at Madison. It's uh, I think it covers the whole gamut of being a good human being. I, I tell our principal all the time, you win championships with good people. Our superintendent's unbelievable. He played here. Our principal's unbelievable. He played here. Our kids are unbelievable. They're, they, their grades, we got like a three two five team GPA, but we kind of live by this, you know, uh, crawl, commitment. I think that's what's wrong with the world. Men can't stay committed, you know. Um, They just go and do what pleases them. I tell our, and you've heard Jimbo say this, you know, men do what they got to do. Little boys do what they want to do. Yeah. And um, respect, my goodness, if you turn on the news or watch. I mean, these people we elect should be teaching us how to respect people. and, And it's just. Yeah, you know, if you're a Republican, you're garbage. If you're Democrat, you're garbage. And just like watching the State of the Union address of the night, I mean, it's just, you know, it's unbelievable the lack of respect um, that people have for each other. Then you see the videos on social media of young people fighting, and I mean, it's just, I don't know, it's crazy. So we try to teach our kids that attitude. Um, I used to tell our kids you can control two things: attitude and effort. But I think I was wrong. Because if your attitude sucks, your effort's always going to suck. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so um, it's so true, coach. You know what I'm saying? And and if your attitude is great every day, man, you got a chance. You got a chance. And I, I put in there, it's easy to be a complainer. It takes zero ability. It's hard to be excellent, you know, without a great great mindset. And I'll control my thoughts. Willingness is huge, you know, and especially in this day and age of NIL and and guys. You know, especially in Florida, being able to jump schools left and right, you know, yeah. <laughs> um, just be, you know, willing to play another position, willing to play special teams, um, just willing, you know, if you're going to be a good husband and dad, you better be willing to sacrifice because you're not going to have a long marriage. If not, you know, yeah. the question there is, what will I give up? What will I put my body through? What kind of teammate will I be? And then the last one's love, greatest commandment of all. Um, Man, I'm proud to say I don't know that I've ever been on any team that I've played on or coached on where there's any racial issues at all. Um, you know, the huddle, which we don't huddle per se, but the locker yeah. room, you know, the huddle at practice, I still think it's the greatest place 
in America to be because it doesn't matter how much money you make, what color your skin is, who your mom and daddy is, you know, it comes down to 11 guys being willing to love each other and sacrifice and for one common goal. And, and um, our kids have bought into it. Our community has bought into it. Um, I'd also tell young guys, man, don't take a head job. Just take one. Don't take a head coaching job. Just say you're a head coach. Yeah. Make sure it's the right fit. I waited a long time uh, for this one, you know, and uh, when Jerry Odom called me about this job, he said, I know you're probably going to tell me no, but I'm telling you now, it's a great fit for you. It's a lot like Madison, the kids, the community. Uh, it's just bigger, and there's a lot more resources and all that. And, and uh, you know, would you at least just go talk to them? And I'm telling you now, man, it's it's one of the best decisions I've ever made in my life. And clearly he was right yeah. <laughs> because, Coach, we're looking at it. You know, you, you just want a state championship. It's it, kind of an, an awesome thing to see. I, I love when coaches from Florida, and I hate to say it like this, but go off to other places right. and they're super successful right. because I think we get kind of a bad rap and it's more about pay and some other things and we oh, can get yeah. into that later. But I think we have some great coaches and, and I'm happy for them when they take off to Georgia right. or wherever else to make more money and then they're really successful. So yeah. I think it's an awesome thing, Coach. I, I was pumped for you and I'm still oh, excited yeah, for I you. I brought like seven or eight of them with me. You yeah, know? good for them. Absolutely. And I got seven former head coaches on our staff, you know. That's incredible. I probably I probably coach less than I ever have. Uh, <laughs> and, and, but there's a lot more CEO stuff, you know, that um that comes with it and, and, and things like that. And I've got great coordinators, both of them from Florida. Got a great uh, O line coach, uh one of the best in Georgia. Well, all three of my coordinators are from Florida that have yeah. all coached with me before and, and all three of them do a Great job. Great strength coach who's from Florida. Now, he's been here a while, but he, he played at Keystone Heights. He's from there. Oh, yeah. That's and, a place uh, that's known for being pretty good in the weight room, too. Yeah, so Coach Booth does a great job. I mean, man, it's it's nuts. It's nuts. Uh, it's sad for the Florida, you know, I'm 81 miles from Madison, Florida, and yeah. to know the things that we had to do as coaches just to get that thing going and, and, and make it work, we're here it's an afterthought that people handle it. I mean, man, I'm fixing sprinklers on the game field in Madison. Like eight, me and Coach Vester shoulder deep. Man, I don't, I don't fix sprinklers at my own house. <laughs> you know, mowing, spraying weeds, weed eating, yeah, mining fields. I mean, you know, and it sounds like, like I'm pissed with Madison, and, and it's, I'm not. It's not just Madison. It's the majority of the places in Florida, and people have no clue. And then, you know. You, you try to get those guys raises and well, what about the teachers? Well, let, <clears throat> let, yeah. let, let everybody stay after, let everybody stay after and be, be one of the first ones in the gate and the last one to leave every night. Yeah. Oh know? yeah. And, uh, and people don't have a clue. They just see Fridays, you know, and, and they don't have a clue what goes into it. And so got a lot of respect for guys that, that, uh, stay there and, and put up, put on the good fight, man, because I'm telling you, if I'd have known this, way way back <laughs> i wouldn't have been in florida near as long i promise you you know yeah no doubt obviously um you know on on this podcast we've had the the pay florida coaches right organization on and all that so we're even though we're a podcast we like to think that we build it for high schools all throughout the country right. it will not stop me and matt's crusade to get florida coaches paid higher and, right. and we told people we said hey if we can help the crusade in any state we'll do it yeah um we're so, two idiots that that got a mic and we're happy to share our opinion for football coaches <laughs> So, well, perfect. I, I think, you know, what you just said is a great segue into what we're going to talk about tonight and those building those relationships in the community right. and everything. So I'll get it going with you and, and move over to the next slide for you. All right. You wanted me to go through uh, the coach staff? Absolutely, coach. I mean, there's right. okay. coach, I've already learned a whole bunch from what you've said in the first 20 minutes. There's no way I'm not listening okay. to something you want to talk All about. Right. And I'll, I'll go quickly because there's quite, it's coaching staff, it's parents, so it's, yeah. uh, Touchdown club, community, faculty, you name it. So just things I try to do, uh, what I wanted as an assistant coach is, uh, you know, men want, want you to be clear and concise with them, expectations. I met with our middle school coach today, and he told me, he said, one thing I love about you, man, I know where you stand. You know, I'm going to know where you stand. And I said, that's all I ever want as an assistant coach. What, what do you want me to do? You know, how do you want me to do it? What time do we need to be here? 
what days do we need to be here? So on and off the field, make sure they're, you know, they know those expectations. Any coach that coaches for me, um, you know, you got to love kids first. They'll tell you we're not going to talk a lot about football because we're going to do what I want to do anyway, you know, because if, if we lose, they're going to put a microphone in my face, you know, <laughs> a long time ago. So, you know, not that I don't listen to my coaches about X's and O's. I do all the time, and everybody yeah. that plays a part in it. But my main concern, are you going to love these kids that we've been entrusted with? Absolutely. You know, can't be lazy. One thing I love about our staff, and I use Bo Johnson, Blunstown's former head coach who's with me. I use this as an example all the time. That joker, there's nothing he won't do for the kids at Coffee High School in our program. I mean, from sweeping and mopping, he runs our equipment room. It's the worst job in America. But you talk about being unbelievable <laughs> at it, and you talk about knocking it out and taking great pride in it, and he loves it, and he does a great job, and I don't have to worry with it, you know, and he does, I can trust him to do it. And, you know, about, can't be too big for a small assignment. I mean, he's unbelievable at it. You know, provide an annual calendar, and I know you can't put everything on there, but as much as possible, be organized and planned out. Uh, help them become head coaches of the position group. You know, that's what I'm looking for. We've got some younger guys. I got Cole Minshew. You remember him? Oh, I remember Cole. I recruited him. He played here. But Cole coaches D-line for us and yeah. does a tremendous job. But there's some things that he's never been through before because he's only been, only been doing it three or four years, you know. And, yeah. and so that's my job um, to help him get through that, to help teach him that. He gets frustrated with me sometimes because he always thinks like he's in trouble. <laughs> I'm like, dude, you're not in trouble. And our D.C. <laughs> Coach Granado tells him all the time, Bro, if he's on you, he loves you, and he want, he thinks you're going to be great. So don't take it personal, you know. But help them become head coaches of their position group. Family's always welcome, right? We, uh, My kids are here all the time. Coach A.B., our corners coach, is, is like daddy daycare up here at times. I mean, they're around, <laughs> around everywhere at the field house. They're on my golf cart, you know. But I tell you what it does, it models what a dad and a husband looks like to our players. And yeah. that's important to me. That's the only way we're going to change society and change the world value their input and their time, man. You know, show, that shows respect and it won't burn them out. There's nothing worse than being an assistant coach and you feel like you're never heard. You know what I mean? And it doesn't mean everything you come up with is going to get used, but but value it. Look them in the eye, put your phone down, you know, and value their time and their input. We have a, uh, after home games, we have get-togethers. A lot of times we just do it right here in the field house in our team meeting room. There's no alcohol. I don't have an issue with our coaches. If they want to go drink a beer at home, they're grown men. They can do that, but we're not going to have it around our kids. They're not going to have it around my kids, you know? Yeah. That's just, that's with my dad being a, an addiction guy to alcohol and drugs, I've just always, that's been my stance, you know? Yeah. Um, I learned this from Coach Parrish, my high school coach. Whenever you win a game, I always credit the assistant coaches and the kids. And when, if you lose one, take the blame. You know what <laughs> I mean? It allows them to coach loose and free. Um, I tell them I got the widest shoulders in Coffee County. I, I'll handle it. I'll take it, you know. And then I think I need to set the example of never stop learning and adapting, um, you know, to what we do. Because if you do, you're gonna be a dinosaur and it's gonna pass you up, you know. Um, I'd love to just get under center and run old wing tee like I knew forever what I grew up on. But that we're not gonna get those basketball kids to play, and we're not gonna get those. Like, yeah, you know, them jokers ain't coming out there just to block at X all the time, like we did 10, 15 years ago. So um, I'll constantly learn and adapt. Yeah. You know, coach, and I, I have a story about that um, with you. Uh, you. I don't know if you remember this, but a while back, uh, coach Mack did a play fast clinic in Jacksonville. Right. And I was at Oak leaf. And um, I remember I walked out and you were like, Hey, I need to talk to you. And I, I, I knew who you were, but I was like, there, he doesn't know who I am. What's he want to talk to me for? Right. And we came over and we had a discussion. I won't get too far into it, but you were asking me about a couple of things that happened in the game against a similar opponent. And that's when I was like, oh, this guy is a guy that definitely wants to adapt and wants to go through things because you were picking my brain on stuff. And I'm not trying to say that I was doing everything right or whatever, right. but it was just a great example of a head coach that's very well known. And you were willing to come talk to me about some things. And Oh, that yeah. says a lot about your character to me. Uh, not again, not that you had to prove anything to me, yeah. but I was like, Oh, coach gets it. You know, oh, like I can see him out there picking everyone's brain and your whole staff was doing that. And I think that goes right to what you said about always trying to adapt and get better. You guys were constantly on the lookout for everything. So absolutely. 
you know, that's just a, a story I have about you, you know, that you probably didn't even remember, but uh, it was a, <laughs> that was a great clinic, man. I wish they still had that sucker. Well, we're trying to get Mac to do it again. Okay. Uh, so I, I constantly, I'm trying to get him on this podcast. Yeah, um, his is way bigger, so I don't blame him for not coming on mine, but we right. always try to get him on. <laughs> uh, that, this is just pictures, man, from that's after the state game in the bins. Uh, there's my son and a, Coach AB. Of course, I coached both of them at Madison. The middle one's Coach Granado. Uh, man, he had been the state championship game with Edgewater a few times, and they came up short against St. Thomas Aquinas. So this was his first first you know first state championship and that was yeah. after the game and and then i have no idea we did a business trip once a year where we dress <laughs> up i have no idea why we decided to wear i think it's probably coach prime our kids were digging that so me and coach faster get cowboy hats granado i have you know indiana jones i guess i don't know what he's doing <laughs> you know but we dress you know we did that and wore boots and kids loved it you know coach so. i you need to wear that outfit more often it's fantastic yeah it's pretty cool man <laughs> And then, you know, talking about adapting and learning, Coach, uh, me and our receiver coach flew out to Bixby High School, which if guys don't know about them, man, they're unbelievable. Oh, yeah. Unbelievable. Tyson Snyder's their OC, but their whole staff, you're talking about great dudes. We went out there for three days, and, man, they treated us like royalty. But we got some things from them that we brought back offensively that really helped us. And then Coach G, Granado, and – Defense staff drove up to NC State and spent two days with Tony Gibson because we're a stack team, and we got some really good stuff uh, from them practice wise and a, and a couple blitzes and and uh, some stuff on how to defend outside zone and and so um, this year we didn't get to go do a lot of that because we spoke at like five or six different clinics. But I am going to go up to Georgia Tech. I love what they do in our quarterback run game. Uh, oh so yeah. I'm probably going to watch Florida State practice our spring break and then go up to Georgia Tech one day and try to pick their brain on quarterback run game. And, and uh, just, you know, if you can get one thing, we went to watch University of Georgia practice. We got two drills they did at practice that have been mainstays uh, in our practice the last uh, year, you know. So if you can just get one or two things, um, it's well worth it. Absolutely. All right. So talking about the kids and, and, uh, I heard Coach Smart the other, a couple of weeks ago. He was speaking at night clinic in Atlanta, and he said when he first became a head coach, about 95% of his time was spent in the defensive meeting room because he's good at that, and that's what he's always done. He said now he spends about 25% in those areas. The other 75% is relationship building with the kids because he thinks he's really he, he is really good at that. Yeah. But, affecting those kids and that's kind of the role i've had to step into being here i've got uh there's 21 coaches on our staff grades 9 through 12 so there's not a whole lot of stuff for me to do other than ride around at practice and kind of just complain and <laughs> fix things you know so um i think i'm really good at this i think kids would say that they enjoy they have enjoyed playing for me and that um that we've loved them above all else and try to help them but you got to get to know their story man um why are they the way they are what's happened to them um i don't think a kid wakes up in the morning and says you know what man i can't wait to get to school and piss coach co off you know i don't think a kid does that now there's a reason um they're the way they are so you got to get to know their story you got to know why they're the way they are what's happened to them in their life to make them like that if you can't love them, you can't lead them. The same FCA guy that told me that when I got in that wreck also told me uh, rules without relationships equals rebellion. You know? That's a good uh, one. We have one rule on our team, do right. The do right rule. You, you, you all know what's right and wrong, do right. Um, off the field and off seasons when we have to be our best, you know, and I use clips from NFL guys most of the time. When professional athletes or college athletes get in trouble, it's the off season. It's yeah. not during the season. It's, it's, good it's point. the off season. You know, um, so that's when we got to be our best. Where do the kids live, and who they live with, and are you willing to go, no matter where it's at? You know, and uh, I tell, I was talking to one of my former players from Madison that coaches there. He's their head middle school coach. I said, you know, EB, talked to him yesterday. I said the one thing I can say. It's Coach Coe's always been good in the hood. You know, there, there's not a hood that I've coached in, that, you know, in that area that I couldn't go into no matter what time. Yeah. Because the people there knew 
I was coming to help somebody. I wasn't there to cause problems or anything like that. And, and, uh, you gotta be willing to go, man. And, uh, those kids gotta be able to see you and you gotta be visual, visible in those areas. What's their vice? What do they go to, uh, when things go bad and their struggle, you know, there's so many things that kids go through that we have no clue about. And they're not just going to come in here and tell you, Yeah, right? you, you got to, you got to study them. You got, you got to, you got to know their body language. You got to know their facial expressions. You got to body language, a big thing with me, you know, you, you can tell when a kid's struggling and, and, and you gotta, you gotta be able to do that. Um, I started Wednesday night at coaches houses when I was at Madison, you know, honestly, I started early selfishly. I knew if I fed them, they, we could watch film that changed after that wreck, you know, it became more of an opportunity to model what a husband and a dad look like. You know, if you spill your drink at my house, am I going to go slam nuts or are we just going to get it cleaned <laughs> up and get it fixed, you know? And, and we still do that. Our kids get fed here. Unbelievable. But our coaches still do this. Um, so coach talk just real briefly, describe exactly what that is for people that are listening. Okay. So, and, and when we get to the next slide, there's some pictures, but, um, so what I've had to do here, when I first started assist coach at Madison, whatever position. So it was O-line. I'd, I'd have the O-line come over, right, on Wednesday nights after practice. And I might grill hamburgers, hot dogs. My wife might make spaghetti, whatever. Um, and, man, we they just hang out, you know. So, like, so now here, because I don't have a position group, I just – it might be the seniors or it might be a position group for that week. But most of them are going to sit right there in the living room and watch NFL Network. Or they're going yeah. to go to my son's room. We got two TVs in there when the kids come over and they're going to play Madden or whatever. And some of them might just come outside with me while I'm cooking, you know. But it's an opportunity for them to see what a family looks like, yeah. you know, what a husband and how a husband and wife interact, how a, a mom and a dad interact. Because a lot of our kids don't have that uh, at home, and uh, all of our coaches do it. Man, I mean, it's a really good thing. Um, yeah, that's awesome. And then promote all the good things they do, man. You know, I'm social media, man, it can be the devil, <laughs> right? But I think you got to use it to your good, man. When kids do good, promote it. You know, um, we have a TV right outside my office in the field house and it's got pictures from our season and it's got all our college guys pictures up there. And if it's anything to do with our program, it's got our schedule up there. It's got our spring practice schedule. Anything that has to do with our program, it's on that TV and it's constantly rolling through for when visitors come in or college coaches, you know, and anything positive, it's it's on that TV. And parents love it. You know, yeah. parents parents love it. I mean, uh, who doesn't want to see their kid on social media doing really well or, or a coach bragging about their kids, you know, making all A's or, or whatever, you know. And, and uh, we all want to feel good. We all want the pat on the back reward them for everything that matters, weight room, academics, attendance, um, scout team, all of that, you know, let's see what else we got here. You know, use technology to talk about Twitter. One thing I do that I, th I got from coach Sweeney, I've taken Travis Jay up there to visit uh, way back and we got to sit in the team meeting room and, and coach Sweeney starts every meeting every day with some type of video, right? Kind of the, the mantra for the day. The one that I'm always going to show our kids every year is Jimmy Johnson. When he came back to University of Miami and talking about fatigue, making a, making you a coward. I mean, I get chill bumps every time I watch it. I sent our middle school coach the other day and went down there with him when he showed it to our, to our eighth graders, but it, <laughs> it's a, it's two and a half minutes. Yep. And Jimmy Johnson, man, he don't get, I mean, he's a bad dude. And, uh, but he comes back to University of Miami talking about fatigue. He said, everybody thinks football is just big, tough guys, big old. He said, football rewards guys are in great condition. And, uh, you know, so we do that. And it might be something, you know, like if a kid gets in trouble at a different school or something, you know, that might be what I pull up and show our kids. Like, don't think this can't be you. This kid was four stars going to such and such, <laughs> and he just ruined his life forever hanging around the wrong people or, or being in the wrong situation. And so our kids know when they come in second block, they're going to get breakfast and then we're going to watch something. It might be, it might be a training video of a guy, uh, his takeoff in the 40, you know, it's going to be something that has to do with football or life. I use Inky Johnson a lot, uh, Kirby smart, Saban, 
if I see it on Twitter and I think it can apply to our kids, I'm going to email it to myself, man. Yeah. Where we can use it. So I, I think that's good because kids are visual these days so much more because they use their phone. You know what I mean? And so, and then you got to expose them to things outside their comfort zone. And I'm not a big seven on seven guy, but we're going to go to two of them every summer. Last year we went to uh, Florida State and we went to Georgia. And we went to Georgia. We stayed the night in a gym. We got we we stayed at some school up there and stayed in the gym. And at Florida State seven on seven, we sucked. We were terrible. It was awful. We were terrible. Two weeks later, we're at Georgia with thirty eight other schools. We're the number one seed going into the tournament. Yeah, right. We played all six games inside Sanford Stadium. You think our kids didn't love that and have a blast? Oh yeah. You know what I mean? And so it ain't about me. Hell, I had to get out of my comfort zone. Yeah. I, you know, but our kids loved it, and the, and they got to see, and they got to see what real deal Power Five D one athletes look like too. Oh I yeah, I should have took the parents. <laughs> but there's a picture in Sanford Stadium. There's my son with our O line coach. He ran to our O line coach. He didn't even run to me after he scored. <laughs> uh, that's obviously in front of Coach Bowden's um, um, statue. statue at yeah. Florida State last last summer. Um, I think there's a few more on there. All right. So I think we missed the boat a lot. That's our ninth grade team up top. Uh, we have a separate ninth grade staff. There's six coaches there. Um, and they went undefeated. And I mean, did a, our coaches did a great job with those kids. So I got them t-shirts, man. That, that right there is on the t-shirt. And then the bottom picture um, is our seventh grade team playing Valdosta for the <laughs> conference championship. So what I did at practice that day, I told our kids, at the, our varsity kids in the practice, I, I brought them up like 10, 15 minutes early. I said, fellas, I'm going to watch the seventh grade play for the championship right down here in our stadium. I'm not making you go, but I sure I bet they'll play a lot harder if they saw all y'all there. Oh, yeah. Our whole, our whole team came, right? And that's at halftime. And you can see our, but you think our middle school parents didn't appreciate that? And you think our middle school parents, they want their babies coming to play for us when they see that kind of support, you know? And so they wound up winning that thing and, and uh, won the conference championship, beat, beat Colquitt and Lowndes and Valdosta, beat Valdosta twice, you know. So our whole program last year, sixth grade went undefeated, seventh grade won the championship, eighth grade I think got third in the conference, ninth grade went undefeated, JV was six and one, and varsity was undefeated. So we got something brewing. Oh, yeah. No pun intended. <laughs> but Anyway, the game day swag, Coach Gaddy at Swanee, he uh, coached for me at Madison. He does all our swag stuff for us, our graphics and all that. Kids love that. You know, we put different position groups on there, but kids love that stuff. And then, of course, Florida State, you know, we set up the visit after that day. There's our business trip to Georgia Southern before we played uh, Statesboro High School, you know, just exposing our kids. All right, so that top left one, I mentioned scout teams earlier. I personally took that, that group of kids to uh, – I let them choose between the Chinese buffet and the Mexican restaurant buffet. They chose Mexican. But those kids right there, there's a senior, and the rest of them are sophomore. And when I tell you we had, we had an unbelievable scout team look this year, yeah, because we brag on those kids and we buy into those kids and and uh, we, we make it competitive. But I personally took them that week to eat because of the, the look they gave us uh, that we can practice. Now, all those kids right there, other than the senior, will wind up starting for us uh, this year on varsity. Then in my garage, man, we got a barbershop going on. <laughs> and we always go to Wild Adventures after our, our July OTA. Um, we all, we, we got a deal work with Wild Adventures, so our, we'll go to five or six hours of Wild Adventures with our kids and, and just let them relax before we start the, the real season up and all that good stuff. But Really, Coach, you know, there's there's Wednesday nights. That's Coach Grantham, top left. Uh, linebackers, I think that's ribeyes. You can tell you make more money in Georgia. Uh, <laughs> bottom left is Coach Berger's house, my OC. I think that's the whole offense Yeah, there eating on a Wednesday night. And then that's Coach G's, uh, G's son in the pool with our start free safety. We have aqua therapy on Fridays at our pool up here at the college. And I let our kids go be a part of it if it's not an away game. It's it's just for a few minutes, you know. Yeah. Um, but it's a way of giving back, you know, and and uh, to our community who supports us. Um, and then those are my top lefts when I first moved to Douglas Coffee. But the other ones are kids I had at Florida State. Um, 
you know, we were 45 minutes down the road, you know, and we come over there all the time. Three yeah, a few, few of those guys look familiar to me. Yeah, pretty good players there, <laughs> um, you know. So, again, it, man, it comes down to intentionality, right, and spending time with them. I mean, that's, yeah. what, that's what it comes down to. You don't have to spend a whole lot of money. There's one of our seniors reading in the special needs class. That's our DB coach uh, having a fish fry with the DBs. And then this cat right here is James Gerard. He plays receiver for us. And his dad's behind me over there. It's funny how God works. His dad coached for me at Madison in 2013. Out of the blue, he he shows up and coaches with me for one year. James was a little pipsqueak. But James stayed. Uh, they lived up near Athens then. James and his mom stayed up here. Coach Gerard only coached with me for a year. Um, but then I come be the head coach of coffee, and I get to coach James, coach, his, coach Gerard's son. James plays four sports, man. Wow. Uh, does hurdles swims made the state meet and swimming and he also plays soccer and uh i went to, i've never been to swim meet in my life you know? <laughs> but i show up to watch him swim <laughs> coach there's four other varsity football coaches there watch this cat swim Jeez. You know? so if you don't think that don't affect kids right and they see hey man it's more than just football we love you we're gonna support you you know again that was a saturday at noon you know, I love watching Michael Phelps in Olympics, but I ain't never been there swim meet, man. Pretty cool, <laughs> you know. But but we went to go watch James, and so, yeah, of course, uh, it was awesome. Again, it's, it just comes down to spending time with them, on and off the field, and and uh, you know, all right, administration. So again, don't take a job just to take it, right? You better do your research, um, pick and choose your battles wisely because there's going to be one every day, right? There's going to be something you could go up there with and complain about, so. Make sure it's something worth complaining about and fighting for. Share your vision and all the good things that happen constantly with your your principal, your assistant principals, um, your superintendent, right? It gives them firepower and answers. You know what I'm saying? When when somebody calls and says, well, coach ain't doing this and this. Well, coach just sent me five pictures the other day of them doing this or yeah. – did you know they have a team GPA of 3.25? Do you know they have 20 kids that made all A's last semester? Um, you know, do you know uh, Coach Johnson just took two kids, drove on his own dime up to Cumberland University in Tennessee where those kids can have an opportunity to play college football? So constantly share those things with them because um, it gives them answers for when people call. I always try to be proactive with that stuff. Yeah. Uh, don't ever let them be surprised with anything, man. If you screw up, man, you better call that principal first and, and man up with it. Be the first one to tell them. Don't let don't let the newspaper or, or something like that be the first one. Um, I think it's huge to have them hand out the academic awards at the banquet, right? Again, gives them an opportunity to get up in front of the parents and, and push academics. Um, always, no matter how you feel about them, shower them with praise to their bosses. Yeah. And the community, right? Because a principal and a superintendent, and a head coach are very similar. You know, most people are wanting something from them when they come see them. They ain't coming just to exchange friendly, right? They're wanting something. So, you know, I'm probably the most fortunate one because when you win, you're going to get that praise from people. Ain't many people praising the principal. It's always the principal. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, no. So, I know. So I'm always going. Like like our superintendent here, Dr. Lease, and, and my principal, uh, Van Allen, you ain't going to find two better guys to work for. I don't care. You can't tell me nothing about either one of them. I, I love them both, man. They have been great to Mike Coe and this staff and these kids. And so every chance I get, I'm going to brag on them and praise them. Because yeah. all, all I know is what they've done for me and our staff and our kids, and they've been wonderful, you know. You never go wrong with gear and hats and things like that, you know make them look good. Everybody loves gear. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, reverence and respect, man. You, you know, if you want it, you you got to show it and earn it, you know, don't walk around like you some Mr. Big stuff, you know? Um, and then, you know, take care of the kids, you know, make sure your kids are behaving and doing things right in the school building because it helps the school run smoothly. And, and this is what I would tell any administrator. If you have a good football team program and those kids are behaving, that's what you're going to start with in August, right? Yeah. 
I mean, it's going, it's going to set your school year apart, you know? And, uh, and so try to make, try to make, try to help them with that school building as much as possible, you know? You know, and no one ever says this out loud, but I will, cause I'm not doing it right now. The football team leads a lot of things at the school, right. you know, and, and people kind of follow, even other athletes kind of follow along with the football team. Right. If those guys are always doing the right thing and not letting people throw garbage on the floor and right. not letting people be jerks all the time, you'd be shocked at the effect they have on the, oh, yeah. on the school and the kids around them. There's no you doubt. know, football has a certain bit of reverence in this country. And so it's, I think it's right. a big yeah. deal. So that, that's uh, at our ring sizing. Uh, Dr. Lease is beside me. Uh, and then Mr. Allen is in the maroon jacket uh, beside me, you know. And then, man, <laughs> we went quail hunting. RNS Sports <laughs> took, takes all the coaches around here that use them quail hunting. Uh, and then our assistant principal, Derek Smith, right here, he played baseball at Florida State, played for Coach Martin. And so we went, I think it was a Syracuse game. And man, look here. We got to go down there on that field pregame and all that. His little boys was with him. You couldn't tell them jokers anything. You know what I mean? <laughs> like he was in hog heaven, man. Oh yeah. So, but he's a good dude. Oh. You know. So, um, yeah, that's good, coach. We can go. Okay. To yeah, perfect. Right. So the faculty, you better get to know them, and they better you, you better they better know you, or there will be no faculty. Right. There. You don't want them against you. You want them with you. Right. So we we always have an end during teacher appreciation week. We're going to give our uh, teach. We're going to give our whole staff, not just teachers, uh, a T-shirt. I always find somebody that will sponsor that and put their logo on that right uh, sleeve. Realtors work great. Like, you know, I went to our realtor here in town. I'm like, listen, I brought like nine guys here. Seven of them bought houses. <laughs> so the least we can do is, is get these T-shirts this year. And they, and, they, and they did. They were great. That's a really good idea, Coach, oh, right yeah. there. And so another thing we do, so annual car wash during teacher appreciation week. So we're going to go to the bus ramp. We're going to go up here to um, this auto parts store, right? And, and they'll donate soap and buckets and all this and that. And so during the teacher's planning period, they can pull right there in that bus loop. They don't have to get out of the car, right? And we're going to wash their car for them, especially because normally it's during pollen season, like right now, if yeah. you believe me, oh. right? And so, we're going to wash their car. Now, you know, I preface that. I'll send an email to the teacher like, listen, you're not paying 50 bucks for us to detail this thing. It may not be perfect. Yeah. But we're going to knock all the dirt off for you, and we're going <laughs> to clean the tires and all that. And they appreciate it, you know. Big thing we do that a lot of coaches up here in Georgia have asked about, the helmet stickers during the season. Um, our kids get helmet stickers two ways. We win. Everybody gets one because everybody contributed that week of practice. But the main way is our teachers. So on Wednesdays, I'll send out an email around lunchtime, and I'll ask the teachers, is there any young man in your class that deserves a helmet sticker? And you can determine why. And let us know why you're giving it to him. And then at pregame meal on Fridays, I print them, and I give them to their position coach, and they read them out verbatim what the teacher said. And then we hand them a helmet sticker. And, man, it gives those teachers ownership. And then I'll tell you what it does. A lot of them kids are like, dang. You know what? Miss Davis does like me. She's not against yeah. me. You know? <laughs> and she comes to the games and watches, you know? Um, and so the kids love it. Coach, this is no lie, man. We gave out over 750 helmet stickers. Wow. Of fact, I had to reorder them things. They're expensive. Yeah, yeah, they're not cheap. I had to reorder them things four times, man. And I had to put it into it because what wound up happening is some of the teachers were like, give the whole team one. For how they did this round, like no, nah, <laughs> do that, you know. But our teachers love it. Um, no, that's awesome. And it becomes a competition. It's on our TV out there. Who leads? You know, it's a competition. Um, our DB coach, um, Coach Striplin, he he teaches math here. He was our teacher of the year. He's an unbelievable math teacher. He came to me and said, Coach, why don't we print their pictures from the program and have them sign something to their favorite teacher, you know, like why are they our favorite teacher? And then I'll laminate them and then we'll have the kids deliver it to the teachers. And so, man, you walk down our hallways, there's going to be a picture or two of football players outside teachers doors with that thing taped up there with that note to that teacher, you know? And, uh, it's funny. I, I said, well, coach, the only problem with that, man, what if some teachers don't get them? 
he's like, well, coach, you're always preaching competition and, and everybody don't get a trophy. Yeah. He said, you know, maybe, maybe they have to be a little better teacher next year. Maybe they'll get one. So I said, Hey, I'm with it. You know, I got it. So, um, that was a really good idea. And our teachers love it. Uh, my advice on who your best friends need to be in the schoolhouse is the guidance counselor, right? For classes and NCAA purposes, curriculum coordinator, uh, and the lunchroom lady and the nutrition lady in your county. Yeah. There is so much free stuff out there, free food that you can get if your nutritionist at the school, at the district level, would just fill out the paperwork and do it through the USDA. You know, I'm talking about milk, I'm talking about uh, beef jerkies, fruit. Like, it's crazy because all the free, like a lot of stuff we get, like our, our summer program, we have motivated moms that come and cook breakfast for our kids. But our lunch afterwards is all like summer school food. And it's good. Like it's barbecue sandwiches from, from North Carolina. It's cheeseburger sliders. It's pizza. And then on Thursdays, our motivated moms, if there's any left over, they'll, they'll make bags of it and send home with the kids on the weekends. Yeah. Now, all that's because of Miss Lewis up at our, our uh, district office, man. She's awesome. And she gets all that stuff. and. It's a big help. And then the main thing, man, in them hallways, be visible and available. Just be a normal dude, right? Be be one of the faculty. When you can go to faculty meetings, go. Interact with them. Don't walk around like you're Mr. Big Shot and all this and that, man, because you already got that kind of, that label as yeah. it is, you know what I mean? So just, uh, just be a normal dude, man, and, and interact with them and pop in in the classrooms and and visit your kids and, and things like that. You, you'll be amazed at how much it helps you and how much they'll help you and help those kids if you'll just do that. 100%. So there's our 4.0 guys uh, from first semester. Uh, Coach Gaddy makes all that up when I send it to him. So 3.0 or higher, you get that, and I, we promote that. That's actually my son and my little girl. We went and visited the, the elementary schools. And then, man, this is from Miss Carver. This is one of the emails. We got, let's see, that was in November. This is after we played Ware County and won the region championship. This is the helmet sticker deal. Here she goes, all of you. <laughs> but I read, you read this like at Rotary Club and places like that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, and that's a big deal, man. She's a math teacher. Coaching staff and players have done themselves, Ware County. Um, but this is the part I read. Like I sent it to our superintendent. The leadership of the staff is shining through the young men from every play of their kind and courteous behavior in the hallways. I have a little man that loves football and especially watching the Trojans play. And then as you get down there, um, let's see. Yeah, talking talk about leadership, but behavior. Um, in his eyes, they might as well be NFL stars. When he's around campus, players and staff made a point to make him feel special. You know, I mean, that's a big time email from a really good teacher here at school. Um, and that's just one of many, you know, that we get all the time, but it, it, it brings that all in deal. You know what I'm saying? Like it's yeah, like our school, we have great teachers and it's not just football, man. We have so much stuff for these kids, man. And, and, uh, our teachers, they buy into it, but, but we try to pour into it too. So. Yeah, it, coach. And, that's such a great example for a lot of coaches probably looking at it um, if they're watching on YouTube, but if they're, if you're listening, we've all been football coaches in a lot of places and right. we all know what that email is like when it's like, Hey, letting you know, one of your guys is acting up in my class right. again. And we get a lot of those and that's fine. Cause I want to know, right. Cause I, right. I need to go correct my guy. But at the same time, man, to build a culture where you're getting so many positive email from teachers. I mean, that's every coach's dream. So that's, oh, yeah. that's an incredible job there. Yeah. I, coach, I, you know, knock on wood. We don't get a lot of the negative ones, man. I mean, there's not a lot of it. Our kids make good grades. Yeah. Um, you know, it's been good. All right. Touchdown club. I put, be careful because, you know, it seems like when, when guys get in trouble, man, it's always something of this nature or, you, you know, but, have a budget. Ours is broken down in four quarters. I treat it just like a game. Make sure there's miscellaneous monies in there for surprises, things that pop up. Uh, you know, they got to see and align with your vision. Um, and your kids' needs trump it all. Like it, the kids' needs come above anything else. One thing I do here um, that I have time to do because I'm not 
on the X's and O's stuff as much as I show film during the season. So Mondays after practice, you know, when, when we get done, our coaches might still be here watching a little bit of practice film. But no, we don't stay. All these jokers st- say you got to stay till 9, 10 o'clock. You ain't got to do that. We went 15-0, and 0 and our I guarantee every one of our coaches was home to tuck their kids in and, and all that. I mean, if you plan correctly on the weekends or prepare, you, you ain't got to do – them jokers just want to be at the field house hanging out. That's all that is. <laughs> Especially yeah. with huddle and all that nowadays. Yeah. I mean, there's there's no reason why you can't get things done and at home. You learn all that through COVID. I mean, yeah, you know. But I'll show film on Mondays, and I try to teach them football. Everybody thinks they know, right? Everybody, all men can grill, and all men can <laughs> wrong. cook a steak and coach football, you right? Know so I, I'll show them why we did what we did, why we called what we called, but it helps you in the community, right? And tra- like I, we faked a pun against Ware County. And I, you know, I hate to put my son on the spot, but the snap was bad. He's our long snapper. Yeah. Right. Now we got the first down, but it was barely. If the snap is good and we catch that thing cleanly, cause we're hitting our head on the goalpost. So I pause the end zone copy, right. And show our touchdown club. And I mean, there's 25, 30 people there. A lot of them's older men that just come. They love hanging out with me, you know? Yeah. And, uh, I paused that thing and said, listen, if that fake punt hadn't worked now, y'all could have blamed my son. Don't blame me. Now, I did call the fake punt. <laughs> I want y'all to see this hole. And they're like, holy moly, we couldn't see that from the stands. I'm like, yeah, yeah. I know. right? But but it's always transparent, you know, and they know I'm going to coach aggressive and, and we're not going to sit back. Um, make sure you always have ways for the kids to thank your touchdown club. Uh, cards. Let me see if I can get one right here. I don't know drawer somewhere in here too. right here right these are little uh can you see that yeah these are little cards i have made right and there's a note that i wrote on there you know that I went, but i'll write a little personal note on every one of them and sign it and uh probably send you know during the season probably send four or five out a week and all see, you know, I sent a bunch out for people that contributed to rings, but that goes a long way, man. It does. It really does coach. I talk about this all the time in my current job. Right. I tell our CEO, I'm, I'm the director of marketing now, but I'm like, look, if you just sent out handwritten letters to everyone in the company, right. That you don't understand how much, how far that goes. And so a handwritten letter from a leader always goes a long way in, in my opinion. But I teach our kids, you know, to do that. And then always keep it professional and business-like, man. Don't ever do – when I say zero favors, I'm talking about playing time. Mm-hmm. When I had my press conference taking this job, there was two old men in the back of that uh, school board office. And the first thing, they, when I asked for questions, first thing he said, Coach, are you going to play the best players or are you going to play the kids who have the most money or such and such? I said, listen, buddy. You can ask anybody who knows anything about me. I like winning. Yeah. Like my own son's played quarterback his whole life. He played it here on JV for a few games, and he's probably going to be our backup next year. But he hadn't started at quarterback. So he's, he started at receiver, but he hadn't started at quarterback. You know? Um, so I don't expect anybody to do favors for me when it comes to that. And, and uh, don't ever get caught in that game because it's always going to come back to get you. Yeah, that's a tough one. <laughs> Let me get to the next slide here. Perfect. All right, parents. Um, I think that's the key to it all. And I think we do a good job of this. You know, you got to communicate regularly with them, the good, the bad, and the ugly, right? Have your parent nights, but it's got to be more than that. It's got to be, um, our kids know, you know, that, that I may send a text to their mom and dad and it may be, we don't have a lot of bad, you know, or ugly. A lot of it's good. Like, Hey man, or Hey, uh, Miss Johnson, I just want to brag. On Isaiah, that joker has all A's. He's doing unbelievable in the weight room. He's being a leader. Man, that's good stuff for a parent here. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I'll also, you know, say, listen, I I had an issue with so and so today. I just want you to be aware if he comes home in a bad mood or tells you, you know, coach got on me, this is why. Right? I love him. I want to see him be successful. But we can't have, you know, the stuff that he did today or, or whatever, you know. Again, it's it's out in front and it's transparent, you know, and, and it's always about, you know, 
I'm doing this because I love him and I want him to be successful when he leaves here. Right. And I don't want this to come back to get him later on in life. And so communication, uh, that's what I want from, from my kids, teachers and all that. Um, go to their home, regardless of where it's at shows you care and that, and, and that you're willing, um, a good, again, I've been pretty good in, in most hoods, um, uh, anywhere I've coached, you know, I don't mind going, um, and doing that. One thing we do that I did at Madison, it was cowboy mom night. There's Trojan mom night here. It's ever it's the Friday before our first scrimmage. Uh, again, we're going to have the moms, a, a t-shirt, and then I'm going to have some dads or booster club, grill some hamburgers, chips, tea. It's nothing fancy meal wise. One thing we've added is, uh, the seniors and their mom, the seniors will, uh, put their jersey on. The moms will put a jersey on or wear their t-shirt. They'll go up in the stands and they'll sit. Their mom will put their arms around them, you know, and we'll take a picture and yeah. get that to them. But we'll, well, video, I've always done this right here. Every assistant coach, will, if he has a seniors group, he'll video on his phone that kid telling his mom why he loves her or grandma or aunt or whoever it is. Can't yeah. be a girlfriend. It's got to be somebody's <laughs> been there. You know what I'm saying? Got to be a caretaker. Her. Yeah. Right. And telling her why you love her. Okay. And then I send all that to Coach Gaddy, okay, who handles our graphic stuff. And he, he'll, put, he'll put all that in there with, like, Dear Mama playing in the background or something. And then so this year what we did is we went down the stadium and we played it on the big screen down there. And so the, the senior moms and seniors walked out on like the 50 and faced the screen and we played that video. Listen, man. That was probably pretty cool. <laughs> coach, not dry in the place. Yeah. You know, but it wins those moms over and you got the battle whip, man. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? And, uh, but it's good stuff. I mean, it's moments and memories for those kids and, and their moms. And then, so what we added this year, cause I didn't want, I got a lot more dads that are involved here. We added decals with dads, but also added dudes. So we invite dads, granddads, uncles, little brothers, but also invited all our little league. So we have, we have a recreation league. We also have soul runners, which is Tyreek Hill's organization Yeah, that he does. So we invited all those jokers and our meeting room was packed. But you talk about an unbelievable event and them little kids sitting there getting to put those decals on those kids' helmets and those dads, you know, and then make sure. I think this is very important. A lot of guys don't do it. Always check on kids that get hurt, right, or yeah. that have family issues going on. Always, man, a kid gets hurt and he can't play the rest of that year or a couple of weeks, that's devastating to him, you know. And then if you just drop him like a bad habit, like he's no more, he's not important anymore. And I just doubles, doubles down on it. So, um, our starting slot got hurt this year. He actually lives with us in Georgia In Florida. You can just recruit like crazy, but in Georgia, once they've established a residence, they could actually yeah. live with a coach. So he moved in with us and, uh, he got hurt and missed two or three games. So he got to come back and, and played the last two and then played in all the playoff games, you know, and, and, uh, so it was good that he was with us and got to rehab and all that stuff. But I think that's important, you know, that they still know you love them and care about them. Yeah. And, and we know from experience that also when they get hurt is also that time that the grades slip. Oh yeah. And oh. that's such an important, you know, cause they're just, they're unhappy about football and rightfully yep. so. Cause a lot of us, that's a big part of our lives. And so you don't want to add injury to insult. You don't want to be hurt, not play games, and your GPA drops below 2.0. Or, you know, or even if you were a kid that was a 3.8, you don't want dropping all the way to 3.2, right, exactly right. you know, so. So that top left corner, that's old Bone. That's my barber. But that's his two <laughs> sons with our starting linebacker, middle linebacker, Pooh. Uh, top right is our starting strong safety, Isaiah Johnson, with two little fellas. But look at all them kids in the background, man. And then and then the bottom left is my wife and my son and then Pat. Um who, that's the slot receiver who lived with yeah. it. And then uh, you can see old Regina back there behind him. That's our former starting corners. Mama's photo bombing. You know, she's <laughs> a great, great mom, man. Um, and her son's an unbelievable player. And then the one on the right is just the, the deal for the uh, parent meeting we had for basically middle school yeah. uh, stuff coming up, you know. All right, community relations, man. You got to put the time in. It's not always pleasant. Um, be out and visible in all areas. What you don't want to hear is we ain't ever seen coach in our neighborhood, right? That's the worst thing that can happen. Yeah. Promote the program, the kids, and your brand. Model it after your community, right? So ours is gritty, tough, hardworking, 
And so our program follows suit and the community loves it. They feel a part of it. Uh, we talked about promoting academic signing day, community service, weight room, use videos, pictures, social media. That way the community feels like they know what's going on, right? And they take pride in it. It makes it about us, the whole community. Uh, this is no lie. I have three different barbershops I go to, man. So Bone, I go to Bone. Uh, I go to Oscars, which is a, a Mexican barbershop. And then I've been to a couple different old white dudes in town, right? Um, but I kind of run the gamut, you know, and just just get the vibe. You know, hey, man, I'm, I'm coaching. This is what we're doing. Appreciate what you do in our community. Um, visit churches and speak at churches, civic groups, businesses. You know, I have more time to do that here, um, you know, so I get to go do that a lot more. I go with our touchdown club president and, and uh, go visit businesses and give many helmets out for people that, that helped us in the past or plaques and stuff like that. And uh, it's a lot different when I walk in with him, right? It makes it more personal. And, and when I look him in the eye and tell him thank you. So, uh, again, it's just putting the time in. No, absolutely. And I think, uh, right, that's the end, correct? Uh, there might be. Is there anything after that? Is that it? Oh, no, I'm on the wrong thing. I'm trying to hit over on the wrong page here, so that's, that's my fault. Sorry, Coach. Well, there I am at Bones at the barbershop, right? Uh, there's me and Zine Preston, a 4.0 student at our Lions Club. To the right of that is when Tyreek came back, surprised us with a $40,000 check. We got new <laughs> uniforms at his camp. Above that is uh, Willis Crockett. He, he works in our rec department. He played here. Uh, played at, I want to say, Georgia Tech and then played for Dallas Cowboys a couple of years. But he's a living legend here. And, and so we have man up Mondays. Um, and so he came and, and spoke to our kids. Um, you know, and we try to bring in as many different voices from different areas. Uh, you never know which which kid it's going to affect. Oh, yeah. But I don't know. There might be a few more, Coach. I don't know. Picture. I think that's it as okay. far as this presentation. So Okay. Um, no, coach, but it's incredible. First of all, <laughs> I'm a guy who will go back and watch and take a bunch of notes on this myself. Gotcha. Uh, but, you know, a couple of things I noticed. Um, a, you name drop in a good way. You you dropped the names of almost 20 different individual teachers, principals, coaches, people in the community and all that. And that's a really, really cool thing to hear. It wasn't about, right? And then you kind of just barely slid in Tyreek there, who's the biggest name of all, by the way. Right. But so much more emphasis on this. And when we talk about building community where you're at, whether it's in the classroom, with the principal, with the actual community, it, that's such a big piece of it, Coach. And it's it's kind of – it was really nice hearing you talk about that and refreshing. It's a, a fantastic presentation that you just went through. I appreciate that, Coach. <laughs> well, um, if you uh, want to reach out to Coach, uh, you can reach out to him. Coach, you have a little bit of an interesting Twitter handle. I know – I believe it's your kid's names, correct? Yeah. What is it? <laughs> I think it's that Zach Bray Lex. That was before I had my youngest yeah. daughter. She'll get old enough one day and figure out how to, <laughs> have to change it. But yeah. So we'll we'll post Coach's Twitter handle if you want to reach out to him. But if you'd like me to reach out to Coach, you can always email us at the Podcast at gmail dot com. We're on Twitter at Boardrill Pod. We're even on TikTok now. We're on YouTube. So like and subscribe. Follow us. Uh, if you got any questions about Coach, I'm happy to send them along. Coach, thank you so much for taking time out of your clearly very busy schedule to join us tonight. Appreciate it, Coach, man. Appreciate All right. It, Coach. Great, Coach. Have a great night. Thank you. You too, buddy. See you, man.